Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about another interesting topic in Unit 2. We want to see architecture of 8086. In this video, Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about another interesting topic in unit 2. We are going to see architecture of 8086. In this unit, so far we have seen what is the basic structure of computer. We have seen all the organizational concepts of computer. The memory locations, the addressing modes and the instruction sets in the processor. Right. And you have seen what is the basic operation of processor as well. And at the last, we are going to see this particular microprocessor 8086 as a case study for the microprocessor. Okay. And as a case study, you can just go through the architecture alone. And then for addressing mode and instruction set, you can just follow the basic addressing modes what we have seen so far. And the basic instruction sets what we have seen so far. Only a small changes will be there. Okay. So we'll start with the architecture of 8086. Okay. So before starting with the architecture, we'll see the features of 8086. 8086 microprocessor is a 16-bit processor and it has 16-bit ALU, 16-bit registers, and 16-bit external bus. Right. And to make it very sure that it has 20-bit address bus and 16-bit data bus. 20-bit address bus and 16-bit data bus. But this is multiplexed and it is used as an address bus in 8086. Okay. And the memory location stands as 2 to the power of 20. So it has memory locations up to 1 MB. Right. And you have different versions of this 8086 microprocessor, which is 5 megahertz, 8 megahertz, and 10 megahertz. It is the frequency of operation. Okay. And very importantly, it has two stages, right? There is first stage and as well as execute stage. And this can be commonly called as pipelining. And the fetch stage can be able to prefetch up to six bytes of instruction and stores them in a queue. You will see that in the architecture. As of now, the feature of H086 is it is a 16 bit processor and it has a memory location up to 1 MB and it has three different versions. Right. And the architecture of H086, this is the simple architecture of H086. Right. I'll just explain the complete operation in this single slide. Right. And after that, you'll just have the, the theory, the explanation in different slides. Okay. You'll just, I'll explain everything in this single slide to listen very carefully. Okay. First, this particular 8086 architecture, right, as I said, it's a 16-bit processor, right, and very importantly, it has 14, 14, 16-bit registers, 16-bit registers, it has a 16-bit register set, which is the number of 14, right, and that is, it has data registers, these are called general purpose registers, right, these are general purpose registers. And this will be 4. Right? 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is general purpose registers. Right? And these are pointer and index registers. These are called as pointer and index registers. Right? And show the theory in next lines. Okay? After the explanation. Okay? So, these are pointer and index registers. And this is segment registers different segments in the memory, right? And these are segment registers. And this will be 4. So this is 4, and this is 4, and this is 4. So this this is 12, right? And I said total 14 registers are there, right? And there is a flag register, right? That is number 13. And you can see here, this is IP. IP, this is 4, and this is extra 1. IP is separate 1. IP is nothing but instruction register. Right. So 12 plus 1 IEP and another one is flag register. Right. So it has 14 16 bit register. Okay. And coming to the explanation, first thing 
the architecture is divided into two important units. One is bus interface unit and another one is execution unit. Okay. What is bus interface unit? Bus interface unit, it performs all the operation that is required for the execution. Okay. Right. That is, it fetches the data from the memory and it stores in the queue. You can see here, this is the instruction queue. Right. So, whatever instruction that is going to be executed here, it will fetch that instruction right from the memory and it will store the instruction one by one. Right. That is the main operation of bus interface unit. And also, like after storing, it will give the instruction one by one to the execution unit. Right. And while executing the instruction, if the execution unit transfers all the program to a different location, BAU, what it will do is it will once again fetch the next instruction one by one. Right. And it will store it in this queue. So the main operational bus interface unit is it has to fetch the instruction that is needed for execution unit. Okay. And what is the purpose of execution unit? Execution unit, it has all the important circuit, right? That is, you can see it has different registers, it has ALU, it has control system, right? And it has the address bus, and it has the plant bus, everything will be in execution unit because the execution unit is the one which performs all the operations, right? The control signals required for all the operations is being generated from this control system, right? And whatever operation the processor is performed is done in this particular unit. Okay. And this is for fetching and this is for executing. Okay. So that is the importance of executing unit. Right. So first you got to explain the features and then you got to explain about the different registers set. And then I have said what is BAU and what is EU. Right. And now we got to explain each register set. First, you will see the general purpose registers. Right. This general purpose registers can be 4 16-bit register or it can be 8 8-bit registers. You can see here, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. That is, this can be represented as AX, BX, CX and DX. Just for representation for higher data and lower data, it is represented like this. Okay. But what is A? What is A represents? A is nothing but this particular register. See, all these are general purpose register. This A represents the accumulator. By this register will perform the operation of accumulator. Right. So that is why it is represented as A. And similarly, what is B? B is nothing but a base register. Right. And what base register will do is it will it will be used as a general purpose register. Right. That is, it can be used for temporary storage. Right. And what is C? C register, it is used in multiple interaction. Right. For example, we already seen last video, there are programs which loops the same instructions again and again. Right. The branching instruction or looping instruction. Right. So C register will hold the number of times that instruction is executed. Right. It will act as a counter to represent the number of times the instruction is executed. Right. And D represents again a data register. Right. Again a general purpose register which is used for temporary storage. This is about the general purpose register. Four general purpose register. Right. And there is another register, very important register which is called as index and pointer register. Right. And SP is nothing but stack pointer. It is called as stack pointer. Right. And it is used in instructions where we use stack operations like push, pop, and all those things. It will represent those instructions. That is called a stack pointer. Right. And BP is nothing but base pointer. Base pointer. I'll show all these names later. Right. Base pointer, what it will do is it will provide access to the stack register. Right. Indirect access to the stack register. Right. And SI and DI. SI is nothing but source index and destination index. These two registers is useful to save the offset value. You know what is offset value? In last addressing modes we have seen, like for effective address, like for immediate addressing mode, and as well as for relative addressing mode, you know what is effective address, right? And for that you will have a constant value, correct? Right. So to store those constant values, right, this source index and destination index will be used. Okay. And the next four important registers is segment registers right segment registers is different segments in the memory right 
So different segments in the memory, what are the information that is stored in different segments? That has been segmented here, right? First one is ES. ES is the extra segment, right? And CES is nothing but code segment. And SS is nothing but stack segment. And TS is nothing but data segment, right? And what is data segment? Data segment is the one where it, all the data should be stored, right? It, it, it stores all the data, right? And what is extra segment? It is also another data segment, right? It is an extra data segment, right? So, like, if we need, we can use that extra data segment, right? So, first, data segment, TS is data segment, and DS is nothing but extra data segment, okay? It is used to store the data alone, okay? And CS, that is very important, code segment, all the instructions, right? All the instructions, the program is completely stored in this code segment in the memory, right? So, code segment is the place where all the instructions will be stored, right? And stack segment, where all the stack operations, right? Stack data, right? It will be stored in SS, right? Stack segment. Right. So, this is about segment registers. Okay. And the last one is IEP. That is very, very important. That is instruction register. Right. What is instruction register? You know that program counter, the normal processor, program counter is the one which will have the instruction which is going to be executed next. Right. The information of next instruction that is going to be executed is stored in PC. Right. In H086, IP will act as a program counter. Right, so that is about the architecture. You have to explain all these registers and then you have to explain the operation of EAU and EU. Right, I still didn't explain the flag register. We know that flag register is used to track the results. Right, the processor will track the results based upon the different flags. In the last video itself, you have seen what is what is zero flag, what is sign flag, what is overflow flag, like that. Right, even in H086, you have lot of flags. We will see that separately. Okay. But flags are used to track the track the results. Right. Based upon the results, these flags can be set. It can be set to 1 or it can be set to 0. Okay. And I want to explain what is this. This instruction gives nothing but whatever instruction which is fetched from the memory, it will be stored in this particular queue. Right. And only in this from this queue, the AU will execute one by one. Right. So, we will see all these informations now. Right. As I said, BIU is nothing but bus interface unit. Right. It, it fetches all the instructions from the memory. Right. And it, it, you can see here, it resets the queue, fetches the instruction, pass instruction to EU and refill that particular queue. And this can be called as pipeline flushing. And similarly, I have said, what is execution unit? The execution unit is the one which performs all the operation. So, all the important circuit is present in execution unit, right? And the very important process is it's execute all the instruction, provide the address to BAU to get the data, right? And similarly, manipulating various registers using flag register, right? That is, based upon the result, it can manipulate using flag register, right? And you can see this is the register set. As I said, you have 14 registers set. One is data register group. And segment register group, and then pointer register group, instruction pointer, and flag pointer. Okay. Data register is nothing but A, B, C, D, which I said. Right. And this is the segment registers, which we saw already. Right. And pointer register, you know that S, B, B, P, and all those things comes here. Right. And code segment, data segment comes here. Right. All those segment registers. We have already explained what are those registers. Right. And we have already seen AX, that is the accumulator. It works as an accumulator, right? And BX, it is used to give the base register, right? It will act as a base register, that is the total purpose register. It will store the data for temporary purpose, right? Similarly, TX is also a general purpose register, right? It is used for IO instructions, okay? And similarly, CS is used as a counter, as I said, for holding the count of the number of Interactions, okay, multiple interactions, how many times the interaction is executed, right, we have already seen this, and I want to explain what is the use of code segment, data segment, stack segment, and extra segment, right, so this is for saving data, and this is for saving extra data, and this is where programs are stored, right, and stack register where we have to use for stack data, right,
and then we have already seen what a stack pointer, base pointer, source index, destination index, and instruction pointer. Okay, so it's as I said, stack pointer is used for this type of instructions. Okay, and PP it will provide indirect access to the stack register, right? And source index and destination index is used to store the offset value. And I said instruction pointer is used as a program counter here in this processor. Okay, so this is the very basic information about 8086 architecture. And very importantly, you want to explain about flag registers. Okay, we have already seen this in previous previous videos, but once again I'll explain it. Right. So these are called, called flag registers. Okay, and it can be called a status flags as well. Right. And the processor will track the result based upon the these flags. Okay. And these three flags, that is directional flag, interrupt enable flag, and track flag is called as control flags. It can be called as control flags. Okay. I'll just explain that later. Now, you know that overflow flag. I have already explained. Overflow flag is the result of your arithmetic and logical operation exceeds, overflows. Then this particular flag is set to 1. Right. And if what is carry flag? If your operation, if your arithmetic operation has a carry or a borrow, then this particular flag will be enabled. Right. What is parity flag? If the result of your operation has even number of ones, even parity, if there is even number of one, then this particular bit will be set to one. Right. This flag will be set to one. Right. And what is axillary carry flag? We already seen what is carry flag. Carry flag is Whenever there is a borrow or carry, this flag will be set, right? And what is auxiliary carry flag? We know that in BCD operation, in BCD arithmetic operation, right? 1, 0, 0, 1. For example, if we have like this, two different numbers, okay? Two different numbers. And if you're going to perform addition, right? If you're going to borrow from this lower level to higher level, right? Lower level to higher level, if you're going to borrow, Right, or there is a carry, then this particular flag will be enabled. Right, carry flag is just the normal addition. In normal addition, if there is if there is carry or borrow, this flag will be set. Right, but if there is a carry from one level to the other, from lower to higher, then auxiliary carry flag will be set. Right, and if the result of your if the result is zero, right, if the result of your operation is zero, then zero flag will be set to one. Right, and there is sign flag, which is nothing but negative flag, which we have seen already. Right, sign flag is nothing but it represents whenever there is a negative result, then this flag will be set to one. That is, if the MSB of the result is one, then this flag will be set to one. Okay, and this is the overall operation of all the different flags, and these three flags are called as control flags. Okay. And directional flag, which is used when it, when you use string operation, when when any operation from left to right or right to left, right like that, if there is a string operation, then this this flag, directional flag, will be enabled to one, right? And if there is any interrupt, like I already have said, what is interrupt? While executing a program, if any particular instruction interrupt that particular program, right, that is called as interrupt, right? So what the processor will do is it will go and Solve that interrupt, that is execute that interrupt and then once again come back to the original program, right? So if the that is any interrupt, then interrupt flag will be enabled. Okay. And track flag is very, very important, and track flag will be set to one if the processor is going to be executed in right single mode. Right. If it is going to work in a single mode for debugging, then track flag will be set to one. Okay. And this is the explanation you can see here. You can have different flags. Right, and carry flag will be set to one if there is a carry or borrow. And parity flag, it is set, right, if there is even number of ones. And auxiliary carry, right, in BCD operation from lower by to higher by, right, if there is a carry. And zero flag when the result is zero. And similarly for sign flag, if there is result is negative, that is MSB is one, then this flag will be set. Right, and overflow flag if there is overflow in your arithmetic or logical operation, then the overflow flag will be set, right? And these are the control flags, as I said, and this is used for stringing operation, right? And whenever there is interrupt and trap flag is whenever we are using single step mode, this trap flag will be enabled, okay? So for architecture of 8086, you have to write all this information, 
okay and since this is given as a case study a086 the question may be asked to write about the architecture or it can be asked about addressing modes or instruction sets anything right but you don't want to go in depth about addressing modes and instruction sets because we have already seen the addressing modes of various processes right general processor right so you know what is register mode immediate mode direct mode register indirect index relative index increment decrement and all those things you know that right so i suggest you just go through these names right go through the addressing modes which we have seen long in in previous videos right so that just give examples for each and everything so that you can understand right so you can just go through the previous video and look at the examples for addressing modes of 8086 so that you can easily understand okay and this instruction set can also be asked right instruction set we have already seen what are the different types of instructions right and we have seen uh, with clear examples as well like what is data transfer instruction what is arithmetic what is bit manipulation all those things we have already seen right so these are the instruction sets data transfer arithmetic instruction bit manipulation string instructions program transfer instructions and processor control instructions okay so today what we have said is we have seen the case study for 8086 that is we have just seen the processor 8086 right we have seen the architecture of 8086 and what are the different addressing modes and instruction sets that is present in 8086 right thank you students thank you students thank you for watching kandipa indha video ungalku ellarku romba useful ah irukum nambara subscribe passionate professor and keep learning thank you very much